Hi, I'm Adam with Contemporary Woods. Today we are working on pocket doors. We don't do these very often, so we want to record a quick video showing some of the do's and don'ts. Uh, we had installed these a few months prior, but after the kitchen got painted, um, they weren't with intolerance. And let me show you some key factors of making them with intolerance. For one, these need to be parallel and perpendicular. Let me tell you what I mean by that. The two slides need to be parallel this way, so they can't be like this and or like this, and you don't want them tilted, which means that they need to be perpendicular to the face of the cabinet. Two, they need to be set back equal. This one here was set forward almost an eighth, and this one was set back a sixteenth, so they weren't in the same plane, and what that did was, even though the door has adjustment up and down and in and out, since they were so far out, we didn't have enough room in the plate to adjust it where we needed. So we're going back to the start. And to verify this, we're looking at the hinges and we're measuring what is the center to center. Now, the secret trick is if you need center to center, you also can measure edge to edge, as long as you're measuring top edge to top edge. And that was 48 and 9 sixteenths plus I'm gonna say with, we, with the adjustment, we, we could be within a 16th total, so 30 second plus or minus. So I took that dimension and I verified that the top of our track and the top of this track is at 48 and 9 16 plus, which means the center to the center is the same. After we have that established, I also, to make sure we are perpendicular, I measured off the top of the cabinet because we know that's good. And I had three and seven eighths here and three and seven eighths here. So we know that track is parallel to the top of the cabinet, which means it should be perpendicular as well. And after I had that done, then I, I set this one where I wanted it. I knew the adjustment tolerances from here. And I set this back. In this particular case, we did 18 and one eighth to the back of the plastic here, not to the metal drawer slide, but to the plastic, 18 and 1 8. And um, then I came down and made a mark at 48 and 9 16 plus, or 5 8 minus. And I made a mark here and I made a mark here. And I also matched the depth, 18 and 1 8, from here to here. Now be careful. This is a framed cabinet, it's a half inch back. Sometimes when you screw the backs to the wall, the back might separate from the cabinet a little bit. So if you wanna verify from the back, you may get a different dimension because here the back's tight, but here the back is gapped a 16th. So be aware of what you're measuring off of. For me, the front of the cabinet is gonna be more accurate. And that's where the door is gonna line up as well. We'll come back with the next steps. We are reattaching the cam mechanism, I don't know if it's a cam, the locking rod that keeps them um, going in the same direction at the same time. This rod is held on with four machine screws, one, two, three, four, and they're going to a hole that's machined in this metal plate here. You wanna make sure you don't use the hinge adjuster screw because these Phillips tips are slightly different and you wanna use the uh, normal Phillips to attach these screws because it works better. And once you get them hand tight, then you know it's good. The gear cogs have a um, tooth row up here, a tooth row down here, and it's separated by a solid piece of plastic. That helps fit in this groove between the two rows of teeth, and that allows the uh, cog to stay centered in this plastic rail. Let me show you how to put the next one on. So this is the rod that's not connected. We said there was four screws. They look like an 832 um, you know, pan head screw. You can see the machine holes in there. And then these, these cogs, this is a D shaped rod. So the rod has a flat spot on the back and is rounded on the other sides. Um, these cogs float up on the rod. And what you wanna do is get this, come down to this eye level here. And you can see that the cog needs to fit between those two grooves in the plastic, that groove right there running through. 
Yep, and so that cog needs to line up with that. Once you have those lined up, and also the important note is you need to make sure they're both locked out in the front, that way they're not off. Then you can start putting the screws in and just go slow. You don't need a drill. Making sure that you have both of them in the machine holes, machined holes, threaded holes. Yes, threaded holes. I'll do the bottom as well. You hear it kind of go into the hole. Now, before I get that one tightened down all the way, I'll start the second screw watching it to make sure it's going in, and then I'll torque them down by hand. Now this brand that we used was Knapp and Voigt, the KV. Um, it's just okay. It's a mid-grade level of slide. I will tell you their hinges are not the best. <clears throat> Trying to get this um, to release is challenging sometimes. You have to kind of do them both at the same time. Galen, hold the door, would you? Because you get one started, the other started. Now here's the other trick. To put them in, you need to start them both at the same time. So, oh, sorry, I keep this in focus. You need to make sure we engage the back hook, back hook in that hole there. And in my fingertip, this hinge arm goes into that groove at the front. And so we want to do that on both of them at the same time. And as you get them snapped in, you'll hear them positively snap. And now that release lever in the back there is now locking the hinge in. So the next step is to loosen these so we can slide the door up and down to get our top reveal correct. Now we've used our branded screwdriver that matches the hinges. It's a posi drive screw. The uh, adjustments for making the door go in and out are the front screws here. And this one is the, the screw that would move it out this way. So now that we've made all those adjustments, when we stand back straight onto the cabinet, we're fairly happy with our adjustments here. Uh, what we're looking for is even reveals all the way up and down. Now you know that this is a little bit tighter here than here. Ideally, these would be evened up, but we're running into some constraints that happened between when we installed the cabinet and when the cabinets got finished. So uh, with this being said, we're making it nice and even, and when we put the inside cabinet back in there, we can get the rest of our adjustments done. That's how we do the adjustment for the pocket door hardware.